السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم جميعا How's it going guys? Everybody good? ما شاء الله جزاكم الله خيرا for attending prepare Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a beneficial one for us and make us some of those that are going to benefit from fasting the month of Ramadan يا رب العالمين طيب um, as the sheikh that came before me stated that um, obviously we're going to be going through a book and the book that we're going through is Dalil Talib and this was the book that um, when I was in the Jamia this is the book that is still being taught as in after school after school so if you would go to the Haram and sit with the Mashaykh there's a Mashaykh there's a sheikh by the name of Sheikh Suleiman Al-Ruhayli Hafizahullah Ta'ala he used to he still teaches this book till today and I was with him and he would always, I mean, a lot of students were sitting with him and they would learn from him. And it took so long that he's still teaching it up till now, you know, because the Sheikh is always busy and he would fly, you know, and give durus everywhere else and he's teaching other books. So, you know, it's uh, actually quite nice to be, um, you know, sharing the same content of the book and, you know, the same thing that we've learned from the Sheikh with our community here. We ask Allah to make it beneficial for us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Tayyib. So uh, I'm going to be talking about the things that you can do, or I'll begin with the things that you can do to get extra points for your fast and make it as perfect as possible. Uh, and these are known as the sunnah of siyam. These are known as the things, so what the Sheikh spoke about are the, uh, the wujub, and the things that you're going to need to do to get your fast in order. Whereas what I'm going to be starting with today is going to be um, little pointers that can um, add and give you little extra points um, for your fast as a... a as, uh, as the hadith states that um, the translation, I'm going to give the translation of the hadith that Allah loves a slave that does what Allah has commanded. And Allah keeps loving that slave until not only does he do what Allah has commanded, what's wajib upon him, but also does what is not wajib upon him. He does the voluntary acts. So it's good to le learn about the, uh, the sunnah of fasting. Tayyib, call al musannif rahimahullah. وفرضه الإمساك عن المفطرات من طلوع الفجر الثاني إلى غروب الشمس. Okay, and this is from the. Uh, okay, so we're going to take one point from the from the sheikh's um, uh, point, and this is uh, from the wajibat of fasting, which is that point. الإمساك عن المفطرات يعني to refrain from anything that can break your fasting. Anything that can break your fasting, be it in uh, things that you can ingest, or be it actions that you can do, whatever the case is, staying away from that, from min tulur al fajr, and from the morning time, from the time that fasting begins, up until you break your fast. You're not allowed to, uh, you know, touch on any of those stuff. And that's, you know, knowledge that I think everybody knows that we should refrain from anything that breaks our fast. Now, starting from my point that I'm going to begin from now, which is the sunnah. As we mentioned that the sunnah, قال المصنف, was sunnah to who? Sitta. And there are six sunnah of fasting, of fasting the month of Ramadan. Fasting the month of Ramadan, there are six sunnah. This sunnah only applies to the fasting that is compulsory upon us in the month of Ramadan. And from that is تأخير السحور. يعني, and from that is from um, hastening to... Um, 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 no, from that ta'ajil al-fitr. The first one is ta'ajil al-fitr, which is to um, delay, I mean, which is to hasten to break your fast. So the first sunnah is ta'ajil al-fitr, which is to hasten to break one's fast. And the evidence for that, remember this book is written without the evidences inside of it. So the sheikh just gave us a mutton that we can memorize upon the hanabila uh, madhab. So the sheikh said that a person from the sunnah is for a person to hasten to break their fast. Okay, cool. What's the dalil for that? The dalil for that was what was collected by uh, uh, Imam al-Bukhari and the uh, and the narrator of the hadith, Habur Abi Huraira. And then the, uh, the hadith states, لا يزالوا الدين ظاهرا ما عجل الناس فطرا لأن اليهود والنصارى يؤخرون that, uh, that the people, yani the deen of al-Islam is going to remain, is, 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 going to, is not going to cease to be prevalent. And yani it's going to be prevalent so long as the people hasten to break their fast. 
Why? Because the Yahudi, yani mean the Jews and the Christians, they don't hasten to break their fast, rather they, they delay their fast. So that's one evidence. The second evidence is, um, uh, is also another hadith. This was narrated by, uh, uh, naam, this was narrated by Sahal bin Sa'adin. And he says, لا يزال أمتي بخير ما عجل الفطر. And this one is saying that the ummah is, is going to persist upon, you know, goodness so long as they hasten to break their fast. Hence why this is a sunnah for a person that when a person is um, uh, uh, about to break their fast, then they should hasten. Not obviously, hasten it does not mean you should break it before it's time. It means that you should break it as the, as the last uh, point from the sheikh's class, which is, إِلَىٰ غُرُوبِ shams. So long as the Gurubi Shams is time for Salat al Maghrib, the Adhan of Salat al Maghrib is here, Allah told you can break your fast right away. You want me to repeat the hadith? The hadith states, La yazalu ummati bi khayrin ma ajjalul fitr. Tayyib. Now that's the first sunnah. The second sunnah is, Wa ta'akhir al suhoor. Yani to delay your suhoor, what you eat in the morning time before your Salat al Fajr, to delay that as, as long as possible close to Fajr as long as possible so that you can derive from the benefit of delaying once, uh, what's it called, once, uh, once Suhoor. And, um, and the reason for that, like we said, obviously, so that obviously when a person delays their Suhoor closer to the time of um, Salat al-Fajr, then that gives them enough strength for the day to carry out the, uh, you know, the fast for the rest of the day. So for example, if a person was to break their fast, I mean, was to eat their Suhoor around uh, 12 o'clock and they say, you know what, I'm just going to eat my suhoor now at 12 o'clock and, and I'm, and I'm going to go to bed and wake up for fajr at 4 o'clock. That's not the sunnah. You know, that's not the sunnah. That's you just doing your own thing. The sunnah is for you to delay it. So for example, fajr, if, if the adhan of fajr is going to be at 4 o'clock, you want to, if you are, if you, obviously you want to sleep, so sleep. Then you can set your alarm for like 3.40, for example. You know, you get up, you go to the toilet, you do everything you need to do, make wudu, and then eat. So you have like, you know, 20 minutes before, fajr, before the Adhan of Salat al-Fajr to eat your suhoor. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us, um, encouraged us to uh, eat suhoor. He said in the hadith uh, that was narrated by Anas bin Malik, قال, تَسَحَّرُوا فَإِنَّ فِي سَحُورِ baraka." Yani that eat suhoor, yani do not neglect the suhoor. Make sure you eat the suhoor because in that suhoor is barakah. Yani some people might find that, uh, oh, you know what, I don't want to eat suhoor because um, it's only going to make me hungry later on. If that's the case, then obviously you don't have to eat as heavy as you would have ate if you was eating um, for dinner. So, you know, obviously you want to um, lighten your suhoor as when, when we're going to get to that for what we can eat for our suhoor. But anyways, the point here is to eat suhoor no matter how small it is, because of the kalam of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He said, yeah, and eat suhoor because in your suhoor is barakah. And as we know, barakah is something that we can't put our hands on. You know, another hadith that speaks about barakah is that, um, uh, that um, when you are eating your food, do not eat from every part of your food. Yeah, and eat from what's in front of you until you get to what's in the middle of you, because in that is the barakah. So obviously, and also to eat everything that's in your plate because you never know what the barakah is. So don't waste food, eat your food. So again, the barakah here, obviously, it's something that's spiritual that we can't put our hands on. But we have to believe as Muslims that there is barakah, there's some good in it for me if I do wake up to hit suhoor. Tayyib. Thumma qal al-musannif, wa ziyadatu fil amali khayr. Yani... And also from the sunnah of uh, fasting the month of Ramadan is for a person to yani, gather a lot of good deeds. Yani, your aim should be, I am going to do as many good deeds as possible during the day of Ramadan and also the night of Ramadan. But you have to have that instead inside of you that, you know what, I'm not just fasting, I'm not just refraining away from eating or drinking or anything else that can break my fast. Rather, I'm also trying to acquire a lot of um, good deeds that I can get reward for. As the uh, hadith states, uh, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that states that uh, all of the um, actions of um, the sons of Adam are for him, except for Siyam and except for fasting. This is Allah's telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hadith of Qudsi. 
that all of the um, actions of Ibn Adam, yani the sons of Adam are for him except for Siyam, except for fasting. And fasting is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and he rewards it as it sees fit. As it sees fit, yani. He does whatever he wants, he gives the reward. He did not state what the reward is, but he said that he is going to be the one that's going to reward it. And if that's the case, then you should know that uh, Allah's wealth is wasa, Allah's rich, and Allah's, you know, is, is for them. His bounty is a lot, so you should be, uh, you know, joyous of that, that Allah is actually going to reward me for this, in which case I'm going to strive to gather as many good deeds as possible to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy with me. Tayyib. And from the good deeds that we can do as well uh, is um, from the Qur'an to the Qur'an that we're going to be doing all day, all night, reading the Qur'an. A lot of people try to, um, you know, memor uh, finish the Qur'an three times in the month of Ramadan. And you know your, uh, your, your capacity. You know what you're able to do. If you're not able to do it three times, if you're not able to do it two times, if you're not, if you're not even able to do it one time, try your best. Exhaust yourself in trying to read of what you can from the Quran in the, in the month of Ramadan. Why? Because it's the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran and especially in the last 10 nights. And so we should try our best to read the Quran and not just the Quran. And as the Sheikh also mentioned, you know, being kind to one spouse or one parent, being, 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 making yourself available for friends, making yourself available for people, making yourself available for uh, your parents, your, you know, whoever needs you, because it's not just about giving sadaqah. Yes, you're giving sadaqah, but also you're giving yourself, your time to people that might need it, especially family members. You know, everybody's fasting. Your mom might need something. She's fasting as well, so she's weak. You're going to put yourself forth and say, you know what, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You know, the masjid needs you. You're going to put yourself off. So basically just trying to find khair, yani goodness, wherever you can, and trying to grasp it as much as possible. Tayyip. ثم قال المصنف وقول جهرا إذا شتم إني صائم that from the sunnah of fasting in the month of Ramadan is that if a person was being attacking you or if a person was abusing you or was cursing you you would say to them loudly say to them that I am fasting جهرا and you say to them I am fasting and um, and the reason for that, obviously, is to let the person know that you're not going to engage in this jahal, in this uh, ignorant behavior with you. Or if I'm not engaging in this ignorant behavior with you, it's not because I'm scared or it's not because I'm a coward. Rather, it's because there's something greater that I'm doing, and that's the fact that I am fasting. I am fasting, so I'm not going to engage you in this uh, uh, behavior, this type of behavior. ثم قال المصنف لأن المصنف هنا نسأل وقوله عند فطرة اللهم لك سمت وعلى رزقك أفطرت سبحانك وبحمدك اللهم تقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم that if a person was to break their fast from the sunnah remember these are extra points that you can get from the sunnah of when you're breaking your fast that you make a dua and from the famous dua that we all know is what was collected, uh, is what was narrated by uh, Ibn Abbas, and that's what the what well, that's what the the Musannif, the author, put here, which was, Allahumma laka sumt. Oh Allah, it's because of you that I'm fasting. Wa ala rizqika aftart, and I am breaking my fast upon the uh, provision that you have provided for me. Subhanaka, glory be to you, wa bihamdika, and uh, and praise be to you. Allahumma taqabbala minni. Oh Allah, accept it from me. Innaka anta samil alim, and verily you're the all hearing and the all knowing. That's one dua that you can make. Another dua that you can make is wa yustahab aydan, and it's also mustahab, and it's uh, encouraged for you to also mix between your dua. So you don't always say that. You can also say another. You can also say another hadith that was collected, that was narrated by Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu ma. He used to say, he said, uh, and the hadith is, or the dua is. ذهب الضمى وابتلت العروق وثبت العجر إن شاء الله يعني that the uh, thirst has gone and the veins has been watered and the um, ajr يعني the, uh, the reward is with Allah سبحانه وتعالى إن شاء الله so you can mix between that 
So the second one that I just stated is ذهب الضمى وابتلت الأروك وثبت العجر إن شاء الله. You can find all of this du'a in your Hisn al-Muslim, the fortress of Muslim. That little square book has these things inside of it. Uh, we should try to hold on to that and um, read that. ثم قال المصنف وفطره وفطره على رطب على رطبة فإن أدم فتمر فإن أدم فما يعني that a person again we spoke about what a person should break on and also this is going to link to what a person should also um, eat their suhoor on as I was going to say before so if a person from the sunnah remember it's not wajib but it's from the sunnah that if a person was to break their fast then they should break upon something soft, yani ala rutba, yani something soft. It could be grapes, it could be anything soft. If you can't find that, then tamar, dates. So start off with something watermelon, um, grapes. Those are like juicy fruits, right? If you can't find that, then go on to tamar, yani dates. If you can't find that, then to water. And there's no bass in combining all three together. There is no problem in drinking water, eating dates, and also eating grapes. There is nothing wrong with that. But these are the steps that the uh, Musannif had just, uh, um, what's it called, um, stated out is um, uh, the text. Tayyib, um, in terms of what a person should eat for suhoor, remember we spoke about that. You know, some people might find it hard. It is not compulsory for a person to eat majorly in your suhoor, yani in the morning time before Salat al-Fajr. So long as you can do the same thing here, the things that you break your fast with, you can do the same with your suhoor. Yani you have the intention, I'm about to eat my suhoor. And then you have your, you can have water. You can have just, um, you can have dates. You can have anything light, you know, for those that are not uh, unable to eat that heavy in the morning. And for some, for some of us that can eat that uh, heavy in the morning, there's nothing wrong with um, taking oats or whatever it is that people eat in the morning for breakfast at that time of the morning. طيب. So, the, uh, moving on. ثم قال ويحرم على من لا عذر له فطرة برمضان And the Sheikh then, uh, the Musannif went on, the author Rahimullah went on and said that it's, imp it's uh, impermissible and it's haram for a person that has no reason to fast, I mean to, uh, to break their fast. It is impermissible and it is haram for a person that has no reason to break their fast. لماذا? لوجوب صومه يعني لأنه أركان ركن من أركان الإسلام. Because this is not just any fast. This is the fast of Ramadan. That's why I said that these are the sunnah is pertaining the the fast of Ramadan. If this was any other fast, you would have been able to have, you know break your fast in the middle of the day as in a voluntary fast. If a person wasn't fasting a fast that was wajib upon them, then obviously then they, they can do as they please with that fast. And they can break it whenever they want, and they obviously there's a, there's a delil for that. Or they can begin to fast in the day, in the middle of the day, if they haven't already ate before that. That's the difference between the, uh, the fast of uh, Ramadan and the fast and the normal and the, and the voluntary fast. Again, the Sheikh said the reason for that is because the month has made it wajib upon us. The month, that month is what's made Ramadan fasting wajib upon us. Siyam, Som is not wajib. It becomes wajib in the month of Ramadan. So we're not, you know, so we're fasting in the month of Ramadan. It's obligatory. Outside of that month, it is, it is not obligatory. So, but it was, and that's the reason why it is impermissible for a person that hasn't, that has no reason to break their fast, to break their fast. And then the Sheikh said, وَيَجِبُ الْفِطْرُ على الحائد والنفساء that um, it becomes wajib for a person that is in their menstruating cycle in, in their period to break their fast and also a person opposed natal woman yes if a, if a woman has just given birth then obviously it, became, it becomes uh, haram for her to fast why is that it's because of the blood that is coming out of the both of them and in the case of the uh, of the um, ha'id, yani the menstruating woman, obviously she's, uh, you know, you know blood, is, uh, uh, blood is coming out of her that's not clean and is deemed impure. And that's the same for uh, a, uh, uh, a postnatal woman as well. She also has blood that's coming out of her that is impure. In the case of the postnatal woman, that can last 
however long it lasts. It can last anywhere from two weeks to however long, or to, to a, a month, yeah, in regard, you know, however long it lasts. But as for, as for the um, menstruating woman, obviously that varies. And the average being five days, you can go from three days to five days to seven days, but the average being five days. So for that, for those uh, average of five days, they're not allowed to fast. They are not allowed to fast. And um, the reason for that is because of the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ had, um, was uh, encouraging the women to give sadaqah. And he told them that the reason why I'm encouraging you to give sadaqah is because I have seen that majority of you, and yani the women, are the inhabitants of um, the hellfire. And um, also, then he mentioned that this is due to your, uh, your what's it called? I mean, he didn't, he didn't mention as well, he mentioned their, their shortness in, um, in their deen and their shortness in their intellect. Yani shortness, you know what I mean by shortness, right? Yani they have little um, deen, yani they have inconsistency in their deen, and also they have inconsistency in their, in, in their, in their, in, in their intellect. So the woman asked them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she, they, asked, they asked him, you know, and he said, she, they said to, her, uh, to him, Ya Rasulullah, what do you mean that we have, you know, we're short in our, in our deen and we're short in our intellect? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alaysa, and then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Alaysa shahadatul mar'ati mithlu nisfu shahadat al-rajul." That is, that is not that the is not the case that the shahada of a woman is half of that of a man. So, for example, if you, as the Sheikh also said, if you needed to call people to witness, you would need a, a two men to witness. If you cannot find two men for witness, then find one man. One uh, find um, find one man and two women for for witnesses. So so two women's witnesses is equivalent to that of one uh, of one man's um, witness. So that's how they're short in their in their uh, in their din. So that's what the first person said. For that, like minuksani al-aql. Yeah, and that's that's how they're short in their not in their din but in their intellect. That's how they're short in their intellect, as the hadith state. The hadith states. So when the Prophet ﷺ asked them, is it not the case that a woman's uh, shahada is half of a man's? They said, Bala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَذَلِكَ مِنْ نُقْسَانِ أَقْلِهَا And that's how, that's how they're short in their intellect. But as for their, um, how they're short in their deen, he said, أَلَيْسَ إِذَا حَادَتْ لَمْ تُصَلِّ وَلَمْ تَسُمْ ثُمَّ قَالْ فَكُلْنَا بَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ So that if a woman was um, in a... A man says, isn't that the case that she doesn't pray and she doesn't fast? They said, yeah. And then this, and the Prophet said, فَذَلِكَ مِنْ نُقْسَانْ دِينُهَا And that's also from her, uh, that's, that's from the shortness of her, uh, what's it called, of her, of her religion. So those, that's the explanation of how the person was to ask, why is it that the Prophet said that um, women are, you know, short in intellect and also short in, um, in their deen? The Prophet gave the reason why. And the example for that, and that's the hadith for it. ثم قال وعلى من يحتاجه يعني وعلى من يحتاجه لإنقاذ معصوم معصوم من مهلكة يعني meaning that it becomes but then يعني الفطرة يعني it is okay for a person يعني it is okay for this group of people to break their fast. Remember we spoke about the people. That is not, uh, we began by saying that um, it is wajib upon the, uh, the nufasa, yani the post postnatal woman and the uh, menstruating woman to break their fast. And then the Sheikh also said it is also okay for a person that needs to break their fast to break their fast if they fear that they're going to uh, die or something, if, it, if they're in a dire situation, that they're going to perish if they don't uh, break their fast. And, um, and the reason for that is because they can make it up later. Yani if a person is going through something that is critical in the month of Ramadan, be it health, whatever the case is that could lead to their destruction, then it's okay for them to break their fast and make it up outside of the, uh, of the month of uh, Ramadan. Tayyib. ثُمَّ قَالْ وَيُسَنُّ لِمُسَافِرْ يُبَاحُ لَهُ الْقَصْرِ Yani that it becomes, it is okay. Yani it is okay and it's also permissible. It's not wajib. It is wajib for the first two categories that we spoke about, the nufasa and the and the hide. As for this, uh, the people after that, yani the musafir, for example, a, a traveling person, it is okay for a traveling person that the, the travel that equal the amount 
that it would have two uh, half is salat qasr and you know it's not all travels that you know you have to you know break uh, you have to do your qasr and you have to shorten your salat so this 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 the, the type of fasting that ensures that you have to um, shorten your salat that's the type of fasting that you can it's okay for you not i mean the type of traveling that ensures that you uh shorten your salat that's the type of um traveling that encourage that the sheikh is talking about and the ijma or what's known upon uh, amongst the uh, contemporary mashayikh of that uh, distance is 85 kilometers 85 kilometers or what is considered as um, as traveling in the ballot so for example if um if i was going to if whatever so for example uh, i don't know how many kilometers it is from here to birmingham but that would be considered traveling right even though it's it's probably like if you were to jump on a train it would probably take an hour, maybe one hour, 30 minutes, however long it takes. That's traveling. So as long as it's within 85 kilometers, or if it is um, considered amongst the people of the ballot that this is known as traveling, then that takes the ruling of you can, uh, you can break your fast and you don't have to fast. And, the, and, the, and then it's known that the, the point here, it's not because there is, um, the reason for that is because of the hadith of uh, the Prophet that states that Allah has given you rukhsa and he, Allah has given you a license you know, to, you know, to break your fast Allah has given you a license to shorten your salah and he loves it when you take, your, um, when you take his license yani, the rukhsa yani. he, lo he loves it when you take the, um, the license now, the reason why some people might say um, you know, some people might say, well, if the, uh, the fasting is not, you know, I mean, if the traveling is not, yeah, I mean, it's not, uh, you know, tire, tiresome, and it's not tiring, and I don't have to uh, fast. Now, you don't have to, hence why it's not wise upon you to, to break your fast. But the sunnah, and what is encouraged, and what is, uh, remember we're talking about the sunnah, and what is, what is applause, um, plausible is for you to break your fast, and take the rukhsa of Allah, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he loves it when you take his rukhsa and fast. And, and then the Shaykh said that, walau bila mashaqqa. Yani even if there's no hardship in it for you, it is permission, it is you send, yani it is encouraged for you to break your fast. Tayyib. Thumma. And then um, the Shaykh then went on and said, the author went on and said, walil marid ya khaf ad Yani that if a person is sick and they fear that if they don't break their uh, fast, they're going to die, then also it's also permissible for them to break their fast. It's also permissible for them to break their fast. And then, it's, and then the, the Musannif went on and said, That it is also permissible for a person that's going to be traveling, right? You, you're going to be traveling, but you haven't left yet. But you've had the intention that you're going to be traveling. You can break your fast as you're exiting your house to travel. So you haven't actually traveled 85 kilometers yet. You have ju you're just about to leave your house. It is permissible for you to, say for example, you've exited your house and you're going to the bus stop or you're going to the, wherever, to the train station. You can break your fast. Because now you're considered as a, a traveler and you're considered as a person that's not going to be fasting for that day. And the, um, the reason for that was, um, the, the evidence for that was a hadith that was, um, collect, uh, that was narrated by uh, Ubaidah bin Jabirin. قال, كنت مع أبي بصرة الغفاري, الغفاري في الغفاري صاحب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في السفينة. That um, this, there's this companion that was with another companion and um, they were gonna go, they were gonna travel, right? So they got on the boat, they got on the whatever, you know, the ship that's gonna make them, that they're gonna travel on. So as soon as they got on the boat, this companion just went and said, you know what, can you please bring my food for me so I can eat and you guys come and eat with me. And then the other companion came to him and said to him, oh, what's, can you, we're still like at shore, we haven't even left yet, you know, like your house is right there. And, the shay, and then the, the companion said to him, the one that was about to break his fast said to him, hey, Annie, are you going to, uh, uh, shy away from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yeah, and emphasizing that this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even though you can see your house so long as you are, have the intention of traveling and you began the process of traveling you can break your fast
fast even from your house if you wanted to because now you're no longer you, you know you're not going to be fasting for that day and you're going to be um, traveling for the rest of the day and then the musannif one and I said wal hamilu wal murda idha khafata ala anfusihima aw ala al walad that it is also permissible for fasting for uh, for a person that is pregnant a pregnant woman or, or a, be, a breastfeeding woman, a person, a, a woman is breastfeeding a child, or a pregnant woman, it's permissible for the both of them to break their fast. If they fear that, and if they fear, um, if they fear for themselves, yani, for their health, yani, if I don't break this fast, something bad is going to happen to me, or or al walad, or something bad is going to happen for the uh, for the kid, yani, something something bad is going to happen um, for the kid, Dave. And the consensus among the scholars uh, is that a woman, if she fears, يعني, and if a woman fears that they're going to fear for herself and fear for her child at the same time, then it becomes that it becomes um, it becomes what it becomes wajib for her to break her fast. But also she has to make up the fast, also feed a person for every day of the fast that she has missed. Yani if she uh, fears, yani call, nah, fusihima. if the woman fears for herself alone, let's not just let's not add the baby just yet, because this is a mas'ala that a lot of people ask during Ramadan. And if a woman fears for herself alone, yani that I fear that if I don't break my fast, something bad is going to happen to me. I don't fear for the sake of the child. The child is okay. But for myself, if I fear something bad, I'm, something, is gonna, something bad is going to happen to me, then there's a consensus, which is that the woman should um, break her fast, but now she has to do two things. She has to feed a person for every day of the fast that she misses. Also, she has to make up the fast after Ramadan. That's two things that she has to do. Thank you. Now, and the evidence for that, for obviously for a fast woman to break her fast, is the, as what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي دِينِ مِنْ حَرَجِ yeah, Allah, is not, Allah is not trying to make the religion a, uh, something of you know, torture to you or, or, or hardship to you in any way. It's not supposed to be that. And also, uh, Allah said in, in this in, in Surah Al Baqarah, You read the Bukum Allah Yusra, Wala, you read the Bukum Al Usra. And Allah wants um, ease for you, He does not want hardship for you. So, again, that's for a woman that fears for herself. Now we're going to move on, for, move on to a woman that fears for, um, for the baby. So she doesn't fear for herself, but she fears that if I don't eat or if I don't take my, you know, whatever, my vitamins and stuff, the baby is going to die. Then they said, لكن لو أفطر لخوف على الولد فقط يعني if she if she if she only fears for the for the ولد for the child يعني لازمهم ولازم الولي أمرهم إطعام مسكين لكل يوم so if the if they fear for the baby alone if that's what uh, if they fear for the baby alone then they have to feed the uh, the poor for every day that they that they, um, they're not fasting so they don't have to make it up they just have to feed the poor for every day that they're not fasting. So they're allowed to break their fast, and then for every day that they're not fasting, they feed the poor. And, um, and the reason for that is, um, is what is the translation, or is the uh, tafsir of um, this ayah, uh, the translation of what uh, the tafsir of what Ibn Abbas said, and it is, um, his translation of it is wahuma, and this is what he said: wahuma, yani a uh, a woman that, um, that fears for herself. I mean, a woman that fears for um, the baby. Yani dahila fi al umum al ayah lima wada ibn Abbas fi kuli taala wa alan ladina yitakuna wa firiyatun taamim miskin. Yani that they are both they are under that um, umbrella of whoever from amongst the people finds it hard. Yani they can feed a poor person. So it's not just for um, an elderly person that finds it hard. It's not just for a sick person that finds it hard, but also for uh, a breastfeeding woman that fears for a child or a woman that's carrying a baby. So a breastfeeding woman that the baby only takes um, breast milk. If she fears that if she, does, if she doesn't eat, she's not going to produce milk, then obviously then the baby's not going to take formula. So, you know, she's under this as well. 
and also for the one that's carrying the baby inside of her that fears that um, if she doesn't, um, what's it called, break her fast and eat, the baby's also going to perish, then obviously both of them are under the umbrella of miskin. Tayyib, moving on to the... Moving on to if she fears for herself and the baby. So the first one is if she fears for herself. The second one is she fears she fears for the baby. The third one is if she fears for herself and the baby, uh, then all she has to do is um, feed the poor and make it up as well. Yeah, she has to do both. So now she fears for herself and the baby. She has to feed the poor and make it up. Tayyib. Going on, um, and then the sheikh and the Muthani said, "Wa in aslam al kafir wa tuhrat al haid, or bari al marid, or qadim al musafir." أو بلغ الصغير أو أقل المجنون في أثناء النهار وهم مفطرون لازمهم إلى مساك والقضاء. So the point here is that if a person, and these are cases, right? If a uh, if a uh, a, mus a person accepted Islam, say around four o'clock, right? This is all for four p.m. Yeah, four p.m. during the day. A person accepted Islam, or a, a menstruating woman, she's free of a uh, uh, menses. Or uh, a person that was sick, you know, get bad, you know, got better in the in the middle of the day at four o'clock. Or the musafir came back, yeah, the person that was traveling came back home. Now is muqim, yeah, and now is a resident, is not traveling anymore. Or if a uh, if a person um, assumed puberty in the uh, a child or boy in this case was to assume puberty in the middle of the day, or if a majnoon, a crazy person, was to come back and gain um, sanity. Fiatnahi um, Ramadan during the day of Ramadan, and even if they've even if they've eaten right, even if they've eaten, they still have to um, fast the rest of the day. You understand what I'm trying to say, guys? Yeah, I mean, prior to four o'clock, right? Pr prior to that time, they hadn't accepted Islam. Prior to that time, it was still fast. Uh, it was still traveling. Prior to that time, they were still in the menses. Prior to that time, um, they were still um, losing their. You know, they were still insane. So at four o'clock, everything got back. Everybody was right at four o'clock. From four o'clock, they have to then not eat until it's time to break your fast. Imsak. al qada And then they also have to, because they have not fasted majority of the day, they also now have to fast another day. They have to make up for it for, for, for another day. You guys get it? So not only do they have to not fast the remaining three hours if we were going to break at seven o'clock, right? Not only do they have to fast the remaining three hours, they also have to make up the fast another day outside of uh, Ramadan. And what's the reason for that? The reason for that is Lazimahu al Misak la Hurumatu Shahar. And because the, the Shahar they were in, Ramadan is what's made it wajib upon them. And because now you're Muslim, we said that fasting is wajib upon every Muslim. Boom. We said that. We said that if a person is pure from her menses, she, even though she doesn't have to take a shower, and she can still make, uh, she can fast right away. That's one of the only. That's the only thing that a, uh, a menstruating woman can do, without uh, having to purify herself. She can't even have in relations with her husband without taking a shower. She's not permissible to have relations with, with her husband without taking a shower. But she can fast as long as she's off of her menses, even though she hasn't taken a shower. She can rusu um, in this case. What I mean by shower rusu, then she can um, she can still fast. Thank you. As for the, uh, the kafir that became a Muslim during the day, the fasting becomes wajib upon him because now he's a Muslim and So now he's a Muslim, especially if he's a man and he's, not, and he's free from his menses. So she, she, it could be a woman that accepted Islam now and she's on her menses, she doesn't have to fast. But if it's a man that accepted Islam, he's never on his menses, so he has to fast. And that's the uh, the opinion of the uh, of the scholar. Tayyib, قال وليس لمن جاز له فطرة برمضان أن يسوم أن يسوم غيره فيه. So for example, if a person wasn't fasting, this is this is a person that was traveling, right? We know it's not permissible. It's not wajib upon you to fast because you're a traveler now. Now that you've said, okay, we're in the month of Ramadan. Oh yeah, I don't have to fast, so I'm not going to fast Ramadan. But guess what? I'm going to fast something else instead of Ramadan. I want to fast Yomul uh, Thulatha, for example. You're not allowed to do that. Yani you can only fast the fast of Ramadan in Ramadan. And what makes the fast of Ramadan? The fast of Ramadan is the intention that we make. Yani min akad the arkan of Ramadan or siyam niyya. Yani so a person makes the intention that I am fasting 
the fast of Ramadan. You are not allowed to make the intention that I'm fasting something else inside of Ramadan. That's not acceptable. We're not allowed to do that. Tayyib. Um, thumma, I think now we're going to go on to the Mufatirat. We're going to go through this Mufatirat pretty fast because uh, I see that the time is 2.58 and I'm supposed to be finishing at 3. But I think actually I can finish at 3.15 because I started at 2.15. Tayyib. Um, so now we're going to go into uh, the Bab al mufattirat yeah, which is the things that uh, the things that nullifies a person's fast. The things that nullifies a person's fast. Qal wa iya ithna ashar. The Musannif said that the things that nullifies a person's fast is of twelve. We can break that down into uh, three categories. Okay, we're going to break it down into three categories. Things that can break one's fast. So the first thing that can break a person's fast is external factors. Yeah, and again, this is just a book of external factors such as if a person was uh, uh, apost apostated, obviously you're no longer fasting, your, fa your, your fast is, bro is, is broken. Death, the Sheikh mentioned, the, the Musannif mentioned it, obviously, again, that goes without saying that if a person dies, they're no longer fasting. Um, the absence of intention. You know, if the, say for example, if you are fasting, and then you're like, mm, yani, you don't have the intention to want to fast. Yani, that's also going to break your fast. Yani. And um, so that's from the um, things that, um, that's from the external factors yani, uh, of things that breaks one fast. Now, the second, um, the, 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 that's the first category, external factors. The second categories are the things that comes out of a person's body. Yeah. In this case, it's the uh, nufasa and the ha'id, and the menstruating woman, and the uh, postnatal woman, and also a man or a woman that has relations in the nahar of Ramadan, yani in the day of Ramadan. These things um, nullify one person's, uh, person's fast. And then the third category is uh, things that enters the body. So the first one is external factors, right? The second, and then the second one is things that comes out of the body. And then the third one is things that enter the body. Okay? As well as things that comes out of the body, we're going to break, that into, we're going to break everything down into, uh, into um, levels later on. But as for things that, come, uh, that enter the body, obviously things to do with eating, drinking, you know, uh, and the likes. Tayyip. So now the Sheikh said, Al-awwal, khuruju dam al hayd Yani, things that come out of the body, such as uh, the uh, menstruating woman and the postnatal woman, they're not allowed to. Uh, these, this, the, these two things automatically nullify the person's fast, and we know that. Um, and then the second, uh, and then the second one is one moat. Again, these are the external factors. Yani, if a person dies, last check that um, all of their actions are stopped, except for what. Um, two things, right? Yani, illa, it's name, wahid, men. Talat, yani, yes, when a person dies, the, um, the three things that goes with them, and then everything returns, everything benefits them except for how many things? Mahua? Sadaqatul Jariya? Walajim Saleh? Il Munafiq. Tayyip. So, um, Jazakallah khair Habib. Um, so yes, a person, as the Sheikh said, there was moat. And last Sheikh, that uh, moat, and if a person dies, it stops a person fast. Well, one thing, there are three things that moat, yeah, the death does not stop. And that is, if a person had put forth sadaqah to jariya, yeah, a charity that can benefit them outside of when they have, um, you know, when they die. So they don't need to be present. People are still drinking from this well, or people are still praying in the masjid that they built, or people are, people are still taking shade in the tree that they planted, or people are still uh, benefiting from the school that they set up. You know, anything that you can benefit people from, those are the things that are still going to keep going on. Those are the actions that are going on without you being present. So does not, it does not actually require you to do something about it. The second one is El um, Manafi, uh, a person that has written books, the likes of uh, Imam al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, uh, Ibn Kathir, these scholars, all of them have written books that we're still using to today. They are benefiting from it because what teach, if the likes of the Sheikh, for example, the book that we're reading from today, he's benefiting from it because now we're using his words and his knowledge, his time that he has taken out of his day, we're using it to benefit ourselves and our community. 
And the third one is if a person has a righteous son and that son can also do carry out righteous deed for, for them. Um, and then the, um, the Sheikh also said, الرجدة, we mentioned that, that if, if a person was to apostate, then um, they would, uh, what's it called, they would have left the fort of Al Islam. In which case, they would have left everything that they had, you know, the action of Al Islam that was only compulsory upon a Muslim. Now you're no longer a Muslim, so you don't have to fast anymore because it's only wajib upon Muslim. Tayyib, the fourth one is Al Azmu Al Al Fitr, the determination to break one's fast. If a person is always wanting to, uh, to break their fast, so for example, you're saying, if I, once we reach the hotel, I'm going to break my fast, you know, you know, like, and you're constant at that. This is what the Sheikh said, right? This is what the Musannif said. But the correct opinion on that is, no, it's not broken unless you actually do break your fast. And that's the most, uh, that's the, uh, the best, uh, that's the most authentic opinion that if a person wants to say, when I get, we're traveling right now, but you know, when I get to the hotel, I'm going to break my fast. Got to the hotel, like, you know what, nah, nah, actually, I can do it. I'm not going to break my fast anymore. So that does not break a person's fast, okay? You can carry on fasting. Tayyip. Um, and then the, the, uh, the fifth, or the saddest, the fifth one was um, and he can't make up his mind whether he wants to break his fast or carry on fasting. Again, this does not break one's fast. So long as you began the day with fasting, with the intention of fasting, every, you know, so for example, if a person was to say, from the first of Ramadan, I'm going to fast the whole of Ramadan, the, the, the whole month of Ramadan, that's it. You don't have to break your you don't have to renew your intention every day. But for example, you're fasting, you, you, you've made that intention, you're traveling on the 10th of Ramadan, now you say, oh, I'm not fasting today because I'm traveling. So now you've broken that intention. Boom, the next day, you make the intention again, that, okay, I'm going to then complete the rest of my fast until the end of Ramadan. So every time you break your intention, you have to renew that intention. Tayyib, um, now we're gonna go with it, now we're gonna go straight to the things that uh, breaks a person's fast in terms of things that are, uh, uh, comes out and um, go in, goes, goes into the body. From the things that break that is um, when a person has relations with their wife, even if there was no, uh, even if you didn't ejaculate, it's still broken. A relation means when you have intercourse with your wife, that's it. It's, it's, but that's excluding, you know, uh, kissing and stuff. Kissing does not break your fast, by the way. But if a person wants to go further than that, then that's when the, uh, the fast gets broken. Um, eating and drinking, last check, that this also breaks um, a person's fast. Everybody knows this. Yeah, and you're supposed to abstain away from eating and drinking. Uh, or anything else that comes under the label of eating and drinking. That could be IV, right? Uh, when a person goes to the hospital and they get um, a drip that kind of serves as a nutrient for the body, that also breaks a person's fast. A lot told. Um, when a part, so that's for things that enters the body. As for things that comes out of the body, is if a person was to deliberately make themselves vomit. Mm -hmm. So if a person vomited out of, you know, out of, the, uh, out of their own doing, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that, that's not break your fast. But if you make yourself, uh, deliberately make yourself vomit, that's what um, uh, breaks a person's fast. Um, we've spoken about the blood, we've spoken about um, eating and drinking, we've spoken about relations between spouses. Um, and then there's, uh, there's a thing, there's a, there's a mas'ala that, you know, causes confusion between the people and that's um, cupping. When a person's um, hijama, you guys know about hijama, right? When a person goes and um, get a hijama, uh, there are some of the scholars that are of the opinion that this does not break the fast because it's nothing like the way that it used to be done, okay? Back in the days, uh, when it, the way uh, hijama used to be done is they would um, use their mouth to pull you know, uh, to, you know, right now we use a machine to do it, right? Back in the day we used the mouth and that blood could automatically have gone down the throat of the person that is, um, that is um, you know, pulling out the blood or doing this stuff. So that's, the reason. so that's why some of the scholars said, you know what, if that's not the case now, then that does not break your fast. Whereas majority of the scholars is like, it does break the person's fast. And, um, and the reason for that is because uh, of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that stated that the cup, uh, the copper, and the um, and the one whom, and the one for whom cupping is done, have both invalidated the fast. This is just a, a straight hadith that says it does not state that the reason why is this or the reason why is that. 
it's just one of those things that you're not allowed to do whilst fasting. So, uh, you know, so uh, if you had a, a business that hijama business, you can do it during the daytime. You'd have to do it during the nighttime in the month of Ramadan. And if you wanted to get your hijama, you would have to delay your hijama until the nighttime to get it so as not to um, fall under those that uh, the, um, you know, the Prophet ﷺ has um, cursed about getting hijama during the day of Ramadan. Tayyib, um, and this also, for on the diff is uh, donating blood as well. You're not allowed to donate blood in the month of Ramadan, okay? Because of the blood that's going to come out of you, it's going to be like at least two caps, like, you know, like, you know, a, a, a lot, you know, two vials or whatever they call it, right? It's not going to be just if a person was to cut themselves, right? If a person was to cut themselves and there was blood, say, for example, I cut my finger, there was blood coming out, that does not break my fast. That does not break my fast. Whereas if a person was to uh, um, have a larger, cup, a larger cup, right, that requires medical attention, and there's a lot, you know, like, you know, traumatic experiences, like, you know, I you know, stuff like that is happening nowadays. If a person was to um, encounter those things, that would require a person breaking their fast. You guys understand what I'm trying to say? So, you know, like, you know, violent experiences, okay, getting stabbed and the likes and, you know, that would break, automatically break a person's fat because they're losing, uh, that's a pool of blood now. That's no longer a gray, so that's no longer a blood that can't feel anything. Thank you. Um, so that's regarding, uh, al, uh, what's it called? That's regarding uh, al hijama. Tayyib, as for things that don't break a person's fast, if a person wants to use an eye drop or ear drop, that does not break a fast. Because why? Even though, even if you taste it in your, in your, in your what's it called? In your jowf, it does not break a fast because it's not something that, it's, it's, it has no nutrients in it. And the point of it is not to, um, the point of it is not to, you know, fill you in any way, type of form. It's not to make you, you know, quench your thirst. It's not, it's not going to quench your thirst. It's not to make you feel uh, less hungry. Rather, the point is to solve a problem, which is the eye or the ear. And obviously, the eye, ear, nose are kind of connected, right? So if a person puts something in the, in the, um, in the um, ears, they can, also, and they can somehow get in the jove somehow, you know, in their, in their throat, right? Or in their nose. So if that, was, if, if that does happen... It does not break your fast because the illa here is to, or the reason why it would have broken your fast, if it does, if it does break your fast, would have been because you are benefiting some sort of nutrient from it. Hence, why the IV would break your fast, right? And even though some would say, but then blood, you know, sucking out a person's blood with your mouth would not break, would not break your fast in terms of the hijama. Hence, why majority of the scholars are of the opinion that. That's not the illa. That's not the reason. That's the reason is not because they were sucking. They were, you know, they were using their mouth to. To, uh, to add pressure to, the, uh, to get the blood out. You guys understand what I'm trying to say? The, that's not the reason for why um, it has been made haram. It has been made haram because Prophet has, has made it haram. Hence why the majority of the scholars have the opinion that that's haram and you're not allowed to do it in the day of um, um, Ramadan. Um, as for getting oxygen, as, as for washing your mouth, you know, uh, gargling, um, you know, antibiotics, you know, in your mouth to um, you know you know brushing and stuff like that that does not break one's fast again because all of this stuff does not add nutrient to the body all right i think this is where i'm stopping in the um yeah now nah, this is where i stop so i'm going to open up the floor for if anybody has questions and we can begin from that uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the, uh, if a person needs it, you're allowed to. Then I remember it, uh, we was in a jamia, and they would come us. I think every month, or every so often, they would come to the classes, and they would grab who wants to donate. Especially if you if you have one of those blood types that can um, that goes with a lot of um, you know everybody else's blood types. You know, so yes, you you're allowed to donate blood. Even, the Even what? Yeah, I, yeah, I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to, yeah. If anybody needs it, you're saving a person's life, right? Yeah. So yes, you know, Allah encourages that. So yes, we're allowed to donate blood. Mm -hmm. Fun done. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, when you break your fast, when you're traveling, or if you're a traveler? So like, let's say if I go to another country and I'm traveling for three days. Mm -hmm. I am not fast for three days, but when I'm traveling, uh -huh. for three. And that's why we said, 
Um, and that's why the Mashaik said, so the brother said, am I allowed to break my fast if I'm traveling or if I'm a traveler? What that means is, say for example, I was traveling from here to Birmingham, you're only not allowed to, you're only allowed to break your fast during your travel. During your travel. That's not the same as your salat. So for example, what you're trying to say is, if, is if I was traveling from here to um, uh, Birmingham, right, and I uh, shortened my prayer and I didn't fast as well, during the journey, and then I arrived in Birmingham. For the next two days, if I was only going to stay for two days, I'm allowed to shorten my prayer for those two days. Whereas if I am, whereas now that I'm stationed in uh, in uh, in Birmingham, I'm not. I am. I I have to fast those two days now because I'm no longer traveling. Yeah, I'm a resident for that for those days that I'm going to be in uh, in uh, in Birmingham. And this is just from the Rukhsa again. You know, and that's why the din is not, the religion is not something of intellect. It is actually, it's just what it is. It's just the din. You're allowed to shorten your prayer for two days if you're going to be staying in, 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 uh, in Birmingham for two days. But you're not allowed to not fast for those two days because you're no longer traveling now. You're sat. I mean, you're, you're, you're your resident now. Thank you. Just a follow up to the brother's question. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, if, you're dope, if you're getting a blood test, is that permissible? Oh yeah, um, so if a person was getting their blood tested, um, yeah, that's a good one actually, because depending on the um, the depending on the um, blood that you might need, uh, depending on the size, really, um, I think just for a single test, then obviously again that would be. I don't think that's not that would come under if a person was to um, say, for example, if I was to cut myself whilst. Um, um, cutting, doing with a knife, for example, the, whatever blood that can come out of that, was that is that going to be sufficient for testing? Then yeah, for them, yeah, then there's no there's no problem with that. Yeah, Dave, back is No, okay, halas. Then we actually finished at um three fifteen on the dot. So um, now jazakum Allah khairan. Allah prolong our life until Ramadan, and until after Ramadan, so we witness Ramadan and make us some of those that's going to benefit from the month of Ramadan and from Al Islam period. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.